Hey y'all, I'm Teresa. And Mark. And we're your host for Tell Me That Story. Where we'll tell you true stories of real life happenings. So stick around, because you never know what you might hear. Mark, do you remember the days when we used to go down to Angola? Oh, I do. I remember it well. Tell the people what Angola is. So Angola is actually Louisiana State Penitentiary. Um, it's the largest maximum security prison in the United States. And it got its name from, um, it used to be uh, a plantation. It was a slave plantation. And the slaves there were from the country of Angola. So when it became a prison, it just the name just kind of stuck. And everybody just calls it Angola. Uh, it's got a really bloody past. Um, it was a really violent prison for, for many, many years. Yeah. And uh, in recent years, they had a, a warden that came in that was, um, I think Warden Kane was a Baptist minister, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he was Southern Baptist. Yeah, and he did a lot of work there. Uh, they started, I think, two or three Bible colleges on the prison grounds. Um, just It turned from being a bloody prison to a model prison. And Warden Kane said, <laughs> He said, it's amazing you get these phone calls from all these other wardens, these other prisons, and say, man, what are y'all doing there? That's right. Because we're hearing such amazing stories from there, and it's amazing how God has turned that place around. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still a prison. It's not somewhere you want to be. It's still got its bad places. It's still got, you know, it's... It's a prison. But you know what, Mark? As far as ministry goes, that was one of my favorite ministry times that we would go. And we would go there, travel there, and we'd get to minister in song and testimony. That oh, was absolutely. my favorite place to go. Yeah, I love going there. It was, uh, it was amazing to be able to see those guys. Most of the guys that we, that we minister to there were, were there in there for life. Yeah. Most of them. And, you know, Louisiana is under a whole different law. They're under Napoleonic law. And right. if you get sentenced to life, your chances of getting out are slim to none. You're going to die in prison yeah, for the most part. But it was amazing to see those guys sit there and smile and worship as we would minister, knowing they had no hope as far as ever getting out, but they had hope through through Christ. Right. You know, it's so funny that we're actually even doing this podcast tonight um, because I was actually talking about Angola with someone at lunch today. Yeah. And <laughs> this was the funny thing because that person said, I said, it's my favorite. It was my favorite ministry time, my favorite thing to go and do. And they were like, well, you had a captive audience. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> not really. I mean, kind of, sort of, but then not really because they didn't have to be there. It right. wasn't like they were forced. Right. They were to, there by choice. Right. right. So at the main prison, uh, you know, you'd go in there and it would be, um, it was sort of uh, um, where they ate. Right, yeah. Right. But then also at some, that's where the main Bible college was. Right. Or is. But then at some of the other camps, they have different camps. Some of the other camps, they actually had a chapel. Yeah. And so we, we were able to go to some of those different places. Right, yeah. And they, they, they had the choice whether they came to the service or not. Yeah, they had, uh, I think they've got several several chapels now yeah i think when we were going they had maybe one or two that they had built and uh, they were really nice really nice places and i mean they would fill up yep. we would have big crowds yeah. and it was it was just a great time and you know it it's kind of crazy to say this but i trusted those guys probably more than i should have i know <laughs> because we got to learn we got to know them so well because we went so much and we were in contact with the same guys Pretty much every time we went, we yeah. knew them by name. They knew right. us by name. Well, they got to where they would come to this. They would find out, and this is what we found out. They would kind of, when the first time that you went, they would kind of send a scout out to see if it was anything worth hearing. Right. Because they, they, they weren't there for the fake. I mean, they could see right through the fake. Oh, absolutely. They, yeah. they were there for the real. Are they real? Yeah. And, and then, is it good? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Do you have a real message, and 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 can you bring it about good? <laughs> yeah. And so then after that, they would fill in, and so every time after that, they would find out you were coming back, they would fill it up. They would come, yeah. Yeah. And when we go to the uh, 
to some of the the camps where the they were trustee camps right um, um they well, would unload our equipment and they set our equipment up we didn't have to touch anything we'd open the trailer and they'd grab stuff and carry it in and set it up and yeah that's the one we went to camp f yeah that was the um that was definitely the trustee camp yeah, yeah. a lot of older guys in there yeah. that had been there for years and there was one man there i know um we did a podcast about this a while back we decided to do a video about it but there was a man there named bishop Tannehill. yep now he was at main prison he was at main prison he was the oldest living inmate at angola right he was over there because of the main bible college and i believe he did a lot of teaching and he definitely did a lot of mentoring yeah so he stayed over there now he was a trustee but he stayed over there yeah he was um he had been put in prison for for murder actually he had killed a Pentecostal preacher, and he had been in there for, for many years, and he had gotten saved while he was in prison, and he started his own ministry in the prison, and look, he could preach the walls down. He could, and wasn't he 16 years old when he got put in yeah, there? Yeah, he was 16, yeah. But the it's kind of a it's kind of an awesome story. You know, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, Jason Crabb and the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir came to Angola to perform. Yeah. And they met Bishop. Yes. And they just fell in love with Bishop. Well, I don't see anybody couldn't fall in love with Bishop. Yeah. And it, you know, he was yeah. just amazing. He yeah. was precious. He was. And um, Brother Simbola, Jim Simbola, went to the warden and said, is there any way that we can have him, that, that we can get him turned over into our custody? Right. Um, the church, yeah. It, you know, parole him, let him come back with us we'll take care of him we'll give him a place to live because if i'm not mistaken either his daughter or his niece was a member of the brooklyn tabernacle yeah and they pulled some strings and had a, a hearing and they turned him loose and he went yeah. to uh, and he was a member of the brooklyn tabernacle until he passed away right. just a few years ago right hey mark you remember that time that we got out and he met you it was your first time to ever meet him yeah, first and, time ever. And met what him. he said to you? He said, uh, "He said he called me a diamond." He said, "Hello, diamond." Yeah. And I thought, "Well, it's kind of weird." And I he know. said, "Don't you know you're a a, a jewel and or you're a diamond? You're in God's, a diamond in God's jewelry box." That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. Yeah, and he uh, in that particular time we got to hear him preach, and I'm telling you, man, he was just he was a little fireball. He was a small guy, a little small guy, but man, he could preach. You can actually go on YouTube and type in Bishop Tannehill and watch some of his videos where he gives his testimony and he preaches. And I'm telling you, it's just, he, he was an amazing person. Yeah, it's very good. He did, he did an amazing work there. He did. Yeah. And, you know, he almost, he almost, they said he almost didn't want to leave yeah. because he didn't feel like his work was accomplished. That he, you know, he, he didn't feel like his work was done there. And there was another guy, um, I can't. I think his name was Sidney. He was a preacher too, yeah. and I heard him say on a video a while back we were watching. He said, "If they open the gate right now, I wouldn't leave." Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's awesome because I remember talking to some of them, and um, well, they'd been there so long. That's that's the only life they knew. Yeah. But um, I remember talking to them and them telling me that you know whatever it was that they had done, they had asked God to forgive them. They had actually asked if it was a family that they had done something to, uh, you know, and, and hurt a family, then they had asked the family to forgive them. Right. But the hardest thing for them to do was to learn to forgive themselves. Right. They said, you yeah. don't really experience true freedom until you can forgive yourself. Right. And they had, but those guys like Bishop and, um, didn't you say Sydney? Sydney, yeah. Yeah, and, and all those guys like that. I mean, they had they had a ministry there. And yeah. that's the life that they knew. Yeah. And through the joy of the Lord was in them and through them shining out, and he was fulfilling them. So it didn't matter, you know, where they were at. Right. So that tells you right there, you can there, you can be somewhere right. that's maybe not a good setting, but the light of Jesus can shine through you Absolutely. and that joy can come through you and that be your ministry, and you know that's where you're supposed to be. Absolutely. Uh, Sydney said on that video, he said, if they swung the gate open right now, he said, I wouldn't leave because I'm not done here. Right. He said, there's still a lot of people here that need to be saved that have not been yet. And he said, my work here is not done. Yeah. So that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. For a guy to say, if they were were to turn me 
offered to turn me loose today, I would not go because God has put me here. Yeah. And, you know, so many of those guys told us, you know, if if they hadn't gone to Angola, they would probably already be dead. Right. Yes, they did say that. Yeah. Um, a matter of fact, one of them in particular told me, he said, God put me here to save my life. Yeah. He said, I'm going to spend the rest of my life here. He said, but God spared me by putting me here, yes. by allowing me to come here. There were some awesome testimonies down there. You know, I, I think about a lot. Um, some of the people we met down there, there was this one one guy, and I know you're going to know who I'm talking about. I always called him the cowboy. cowboy. We never did learn his name. I always, We always called him cowboy. He, he would come in every time. He would have his shirt starched, yes. creased, have his jeans creased. I'm talking about tight crease yes and <laughs> a he wore, sharp crease a big white hat um had his cowboy but he looked like george Strait walking in he did he was about the same <laughs> size as george Strait. he just looked like a like somebody's grandfather you know yeah, just a, he did. and he would sit back and and just smile and he always sat in the back he sat in the back and as soon as it was over he'd get up and leave yes. We would we would t- hang around and talk to a lot of the guys, but he would always leave. We never got to talk to him. Yeah, and we, you know, a lot of times during that time, um, we went in with a group called Cowboys for Christ. Right. And so um, we would go in and we would sing and give our testimony and stuff, and then the Cowboys for Christ preacher would preach yeah. uh, and things like that. So I think that's where you ended up learning his story or either through the warden. I can't remember. I exactly. think it was through um, through Rick Ledoux with Rick, Cowboys for yeah, Christ. Yeah, Rick Ledoux, which is actually um, the country singer Chris Ledoux's cousin. Oh, is he? I yeah. didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, you know, Chris Ledoux's a big rodeo guy, and Rick's a big rodeo guy, and yeah, yeah they, they were related. But anyway, um, yeah, he was, uh, he was a farmer. Yes. And he was also a Baptist preacher. Yes. And he went out to work on the farm one day, and he cut his hand, and he came back home early and found his wife with another man. And they had a son, I think, that was maybe a daughter, or a, daughter mm-hmm. a daughter that was disabled. or Yeah, I believe um, she was a paraplegic. Paraplegic, yeah. And come to find out, this man had been doing something that he shouldn't have been doing to the daughter, and he was also having an affair with the wife. And... Him and this guy got in a fight, and when it was all said and done, I don't know what happened, but the guy was dead. Yeah. And he got sentenced to 30 years for that, which <laughs> I don't really think that's fair. I'm trying but, to remember back a little bit of that story. That I believe that he came back, and um, he found his wife with that man. And yeah. so then they got a divorce. Right. And, and then so he it was a little out. later on yeah. whenever he found out that something was happening. Yeah. And, and they got in a when, fight. Yes. He hit him wrong, or he fell and hit his head. Yes. I don't know exactly what happened, but he ended up killing the guy. Yeah. And, you know. Yes. Sir. Sometimes justice is <laughs> not fair, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, there were so many stories, man, so many stories that we heard. We knew one guy that was a um, – he was in there for bank robbery. And he actually did not even go in the bank. He was, was in the car. I was thinking about him a second ago. Yeah, yeah. he drove the getaway car. He drove for the a getaway bank car. Robbery. Yeah, for and and it, if it had just been a bank robbery, it would have been different. But they actually killed somebody in the bank. Yeah, and he he went down for um, uh, accomplice or accessory to murder or something like that. Something like that. But he did have life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of those guys did, and you know everybody had a story. Now, and some of them, you know, some of them would tell you they were innocent, but. These guys that were in there for life, they didn't have any reason to lie to you. Right. They knew they weren't ever going to get out. They would tell you the truth. They'd tell you the whole story. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, we saw some amazing stuff happen there. Some of the best services I think I've ever been in were in that prison. Well, you know, um, I think we maybe we've talked on another podcast about the word anointing. Yeah. And one of the things that we would say is when we would go in there, the anointing on us – to be able to bring the song and to be able to bring our testimony was so extremely strong. Right. Um, the only other time that I ever remember the anointing being the strong, strong, like to that level, would be when we went on that uh, to the National Quartet Convention when God said go. Right. Now that was yeah. <laughs> through the roof. Um, but the anointing, when we would go into the prison at Angola and we would begin to sing the 
power of God was so strong on us. Yeah. You know, and we were in such unity during those times when the anointing is on you like that. Right. You're in extreme unity. And, I mean, you can just look at one another and don't even have to look at one another. And you know, you know, right. what, what, what you need to do next or what the Lord's saying for you to do next. Right. Well, you know, our last video, we were talking about songwriting. Yeah. And um, our time ministering in Angola actually um, inspired me to write a song called pardon forgiven and free and it was and it talks about how you know we we actually build the walls that that keep us us. that imprison us yeah we create our own prison we create those chains that keep us bound right you know we lock ourselves away and this song talks about you know that that you can be pardoned forgiven and free from all that Mm -hmm. and i'll i'll drop the song in at the end of the uh at the video at the end of the video but I want to talk a little bit about something that I saw happen there. I hope I can tell this story without it, without getting all teared up, because I actually saw, I saw a miracle. I know what you're going to say. Yes. I saw a creative miracle. Yes, I did too. I was standing there. <laughs> it, it, it still to this day blows my mind, but you know it shouldn't, because no, it should be the norm. It should be the norm, but when we see these things, it's like wow. And but you know what? I believe that we're getting back to the days to where we're going to have to depend on God and we're going to see Him move Absolutely. again. Yeah. So I hope that through this story that you're about to tell, you know, it'll encourage somebody because maybe you're fixing to come up on a hard time right. or something's fixing to take place, and this will bring some encouragement to you. Yeah. So we were down there one year. I, th- I think it was at Christmas. Yeah, I believe it was. Um, I think it was the New Year's thing. New Year's, that's mm-hmm. when it was. Yeah, it was New Year's. and we were going to feed the guys. We took. We had several ladies that that made food, and we went. <laughs> it was a church of late. It was a church group, and we, so they were going for that, right? Yeah, and we made coleslaw. Yeah, a whole a cooler full of cool it. ice chest full. <laughs> yeah, and I. It was a long time before I would even eat yeah. coleslaw. After that, I got sick of seeing it. I was done. <laughs> yeah, but we. We went down there, and everybody brought something to eat. And this one lady, bless her heart, she meant well. She brought a crock pot with some collard greens. Collard, no mustard greens. It was mustard greens. I remember mustard greens. Yeah, I just remember it being the greens. Yeah, and um, she said, "I I brought a pot of greens." Yeah. Well, I put I picked the lid up off of it and looked in, and I thought, "Oh Lord, I know." There's a hundred and forty guys here. Yeah, it was a lot of them, and then we had coordinated everything, so if somebody was going to bring deviled eggs, then they brought, uh, maybe somebody else brought deviled eggs too, and I'm talking about you were making dozens upon dozens upon dozens of eggs. Right. So we knew that several people had that, so it would feed a couple hundred people. Yeah, and when I looked in that pot and I saw those greens, (laughs) I thought there's no possible way. There wasn't enough greens in that pot for 10 people. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Not the way that, and I don't mean, not the way we know about greens. I don't mean this in a bad way, but 90% of those guys were black guys. Yeah. They love some greens. They do. They They like me now. They like some good country food and some greens and cornbread. Right. Country food, soul food, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And when I saw that pot of greens, I thought, oh, good Lord, this ain't going to last at all. But you know, every man that walked through that line got greens. Yeah, I remember Every one I was the one that was going to have to dip. I was dipping the greens, and I remember showing it to you. And I was like, what in the world? You know, there's not going to be enough. And so you, you and I were talking about it. And then I began to start serving them. Yeah. And I began to pray. Yeah. And I, I really got choked up because the more that I prayed and the more people came through the line, my pot of greens was not going down right it was staying steady and i would dip and i would cry and dip (laughs) and and they would be looking at me uh you know you just don't understand what's going on right now you know they didn't know what was going on and that was okay but um i mean the only thing that i could think of that they would you know begin to think was well she just feels you know she feels hum- sorry for us. Yeah. And it was a humbling experience. It was it a was. humbling experience, but I was witnessing God <laughs> yeah. do a miracle. Multiplying, multiplying that food, just like he did with the loaves and fish. Yeah, yeah I, that's, I will never, ever forget that. Me either. That was, an amazing, that was an amazing thing to see. I was so glad that I got to experience that. 
Yeah. We um we had a lot of good times down there. Uh saw a lot of awesome things happen down there. Met hey, a lot of people. I got to tell you I got to tell something really funny. So, you know, when we when we were going down there, we lived in the deep country, right? Oh yeah. And so, um we didn't have a house phone. We had a cell phone. And so sometimes I would go with a church group or whatever, and maybe you couldn't go. You couldn't go. And um, so I I would have somebody that would call me, and, and we would see about, you know, going together or whatever. I'd call them. And so just a funny little story. Uh, I, I remember that we had a deer stand out in the yard, and there was one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a tripod I'll never, stand. I'll never forget. Yeah. There was one time I had to climb up on the on the ladder of the deer stand and i'm hanging out with the cell phone so i can try to find out if i can go to angola yeah because we didn't get service at our house hardly at all <laughs> yeah we, we didn't have any hardly any service and it was one of those things of can you hear me can you hear me now? it reminded me of green acres where they had to climb the pole to talk on the phone <laughs> it did it so did and i i just laugh and think about that every now and then it's so funny and i'm just hanging <laughs> off it i had forgotten about that but yeah that's funny yeah. um <laughs> yeah, that's that's just one of the perks of living out in the backwoods. We live way out in the country. But you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to <laughs> do, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll drop that song in at the end of this video. It's a, it's a good song. It's called Pardon for Giving and Free. And uh, it was on um, – it was on our – which CD was that on? It was on our was duet, duet CD, CD, our last one. Yeah, the one me and you did. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll I'll drop that song in here, and I hope y'all enjoy that. But we just wanted to go back and touch on that about our trips to Angola and um, how powerful it was. And you know, after Hurricane Katrina hit, everything changed. Right. We couldn't go in anymore. They stopped letting people come in because there were so many. They had to bring people from a lot of prisons that got flooded and got destroyed and put right. them in Angola, and they had a lot of outside people coming in. They were bringing guns and drugs and well, they all actually, kind of stuff. They actually took Camp F, where it was the trustee camp, and they brought women from another prison yeah, and put in there, in. and they yeah. destroyed that place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They destroyed it. So, so after that, we didn't, we've didn't. we never gotten to go back. Yeah, they quit letting people go in, but it was um, the few years that we went was – it was really good. We met a lot of people, made a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of them have gotten out. Yeah. Some of them are out and they're free men and, you know, living good life. And I know one of them in particular, he got out. And as soon as he got out, he even got married and he got a good job and is doing great. You That's know, right. Doing really great. Right. And we hear from him every now and then. But this guy had never been in any trouble. Right. His story was kind of unique. Um, I won't get into the whole story, but. He should not have been sent to prison. Yeah, at all. Um, but anyway, that's a whole that's a whole different story. But he had never been in any trouble before. Uh, he was just a good guy that got caught up in a bad situation, the wrong place, at the wrong time. Really seemed like a really a self defense kind of a thing. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we also what about the guy that was the radio announcer? <laughs> yeah. Um, Matthew. I don't, Matthew. His yeah. name was Matthew. We won't call yeah. his last name. Yeah, he was a cowboy too. Matthew, let me. I'm gonna tell this story real quick because I know we're getting lo we're getting long on our time. Matthew was a DJ at a big radio station yeah. in Alexandria, Louisiana, and was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. He was seeing a married woman, and he told me the whole story. He he said, "I'm not ashamed of it." He said, "It's what I did. You yeah, know, it's what would, I'm in here he for." He he had an affair with this married woman. Her husband worked offshore, so he was gone like 14 days at a time. And Matthew was in there. He was at this lady's house one night, and he said, we were drinking. He said, and we were joking around about right. ways that they could get rid of her husband. Right. You know, we could do this. We could cut his brake lines. We could do this. We could. Uh, and they were joking. They yeah. were just joking around. But they were, they were drinking. He thought. Yeah. A few days later, cops knocked on his door and arrested him. And she had recorded their conversations. Yeah. And he was arrested for accessory to murder. She had killed her husband. Right. And took her him down with her. Yeah. And he got 30 years. Yeah. And as far as I know, I think he's out now. I think Matthew's out. I looked. I was looking online the other day at the, at the Angola roster, and I didn't see his name. I think he's out. I think he's gone. Because he actually used to um, call 
for the rodeos down there. If y'all yeah, know he anything was an about for the rodeo. Yeah, Angola, you know, they have rodeos or are, are, are used to. I don't know if they're back to doing it or not. I think they still do it, yeah. And that Matthew would, was just a great guy. He was yeah. one of those people, you know, everybody loved him. He was just yeah. a super nice guy. Mm-hmm. And really didn't do anything other than you know i'm trying to remember if if matthew gave his heart to the lord he did yeah he did um i know last time we were down there we went for the uh for the rodeo and went through the craft show and matthew had a had a stage set up and he was performing he was singing you know he was a singer he played guitar and sang and he was singing christian music and I saw him give his testimony on a YouTube video. Oh, I didn't realize that. But I have not been able to find it again. And he was talking about how the Lord had done such a great work in his life. And, you know, his mother was a a, a really godly woman. Um, praying mama. Praying mama. That's exactly right, yeah. But, you know, you just it, he did something he shouldn't have done. Yeah. And it got him ended him up in prison. I know mm-hmm. he probably never expected you know, having an affair with a married woman to get him put in prison, but it did. Yeah. You know, that just brings me to thinking about a conversation that I had with someone this week. You know, um, there's some people that they have an anointing on their life from birth. I mean, they're called to do a certain thing from birth. Yeah. And, I mean, that person, they're pretty much – they're not going to get away with stuff. I mean, they're <laughs> they're going to they're gonna be found out. You yeah. know, because oh, yeah. and that, that'll help them get on that straight and narrow. Yeah, and people like that, the devil's always after them. He is, he is, he yeah, is. Yeah, I always said, you know, if the devil ain't bothering you, you're not bothering him. Right. But if you bother him, he's coming after you. Yeah. He's coming after you hard. Well, we might better wrap this up, Mark, but I tell you what, um, I know you said you're going to drop that song in, and um, we just want to be an encouragement to y'all tonight, and uh, maybe there's something that you've done. Maybe there's something you've done that you should have gotten caught about, Um, but, you know, the Lord is faithful, and all we have to do is to look to Him, and we just pray and ask Jesus to come into our heart, forgive us for our sin, come into our heart and be Lord and Savior of our life, and He will set you free. Absolutely. Um, if you get a chance, go back and listen to a podcast that we that we did, and it was talking about um, the story behind the song, You Can Go On. Yeah. And it'll kind of tie into what I'm saying even right now. Don't let it drag you down. Whatever you've done can be forgiven, and you can be free, and don't drag it around with you. That's one of the things that the guys from Angola would say. They had to learn to forgive themselves. Exactly. And you can, too. So. Exactly. Put the past in the past where it belongs. Thank you, guys. We appreciate y'all joining us tonight on Tell Me That Story, and we will see you next time. Good night. Locked in a prison of walls I created, chains that I made held me bound. No hope for tomorrow and no peace within. No way of escape could be found Oh, but I saw a vision Of a man on a cross Dying to set me free I fell on my knees And cried out for mercy Thank God he heard my plea Your sin is erased Cast to the depths of the sea The chains have been broken The prison door open Pardon, forgiven and free Too many times We create our own prison no one but ourselves to blame Darkness surrounds us And we grow so weary With no strength to call on His name Oh, but friend, let me tell you Who holds the key With the power to unlock the door His name He came to free us You won't be bound anymore He'll say pardon, forgiven Your sin is erased Cast to the depths of the sea The chains have been broken The prison
the door open, pardoned, forgiven, and free. The chains have been broken, the prison door.